Well, hey guys, and welcome back to literally my first time being back in the workshop this year, and already I've managed to break something. No clue how I've managed to do that, because normally when I break stuff, it's usually because I've been doing something stupid, but not this time. Now, the problem that I'm having is with ejecting the tool. Normally, I'll undo the drawbar a few threads, and then I'll hit it with a hammer, and that usually ejects the tool. But unfortunately, something has stripped or something's broken, and the drawbar is just falling back into the tool. And given that removing the tool and the drawbar is a pretty important part of the mill, I'm not going to be able to finish the next project until I get the mill working. So first things first, let's try and get the drawbar removed. Now just going by the feel, I think something has stripped. It feels pretty crunchy and the drawbar keeps falling back downwards. Thankfully with a bit of persuasion, I can get the drawbar eventually removed and using a piece of rod, I can get the tool removed. All right, after getting the drawbar out, I think it's pretty clear that the threads on the drawbar have stripped. I guess probably not the biggest surprise because when I use the mill, I'm usually undoing it and then hitting it with a hammer maybe 10 to 20 different times every time I use the mill to change out tooling. So I guess after maybe four and a half years of use, it's probably not a huge surprise that the threads wore out. And at the same time, I'm pretty relieved that it was the threads on the drawbar rather than the internal threads on the tool. Replacing a drawbar shouldn't be too difficult, whereas if the internal threads on the tool were damaged, it would probably mean having to rebuy the tool. And it's not like I'm using the ball's most expensive collet holders, but these are still about 100 bucks to replace. But thankfully I've had a look and it seems like the internal threads have gotten away pretty much undamaged. The drawbar threads on the other hand are in pretty rough shape. Well at least the bottom part, which are the ones that are actually engaging in the tool holder. They're not completely stripped, but measuring it with the calipers, they've lost about 0.6 millimeters of diameter, and that is enough to make it slip when I hit it with a hammer. So with that now figured out, we can now start to think about what we can do from here. If you really wanted to, I guess you probably could repair the threads, but I'm going to make a brand new one from scratch. If I make a replacement one, I can make it a little bit longer to get more thread engagement, and this should prevent it from happening again. I'm also going to switch the socket from a cap head screw, which is what they've done here. They've literally chopped a cap head screw off and they've pinned it in place. And I'll swap it out for a hex socket. And this should give me a much bigger, much better area to strike. I'm also going to make a small step down so the drawbar fits in the spindle a little bit better. This one doesn't have one and the drawbar never fits concentrically in the spindle. So with that now figured out, I now need to decide on what material to make the drawbar from. So I currently have the option of making it from some 4140 high tensile steel, some 1045 medium tensile, and some basic 1020 low carbon steel. Now my initial thought was either to make it from some 4140 or 1045, because they are high tensile and hopefully the threads should last longer. And I can also heat treat those so I could make the threads a lot harder and hopefully more resistant to breaking. Now I did check the old drawbar and whilst the head is hardened because it's made from a cap head screw, the body and the threads aren't hardened. You could make the argument to that's why it broke, you know it wasn't hardened. But on the other hand it's probably a good thing that the drawbar threads broke rather than the tool because it's a lot easier and cheaper to replace the drawbar than having to replace the tool. And you could probably make the argument that if the threads were hardened you might take out the threads inside the tool before you'd break the drawbar. And given the choice, I'd much rather break the cheap drawbar, which is easy to replace, rather than breaking the threads in the tool. So I eventually settled on making the drawbar from a single piece of low carbon 1020 steel. If there's a better material out there, do let me know, but at least for the moment, this should work out just fine. So the first thing I'll do is I'll get it in the lathe and cleaned up.
Now the next thing that I need to do is remove a chunk of material to get the drawbar down to size. And unfortunately, as you can see, there is a ton of stick out on that part. Normally with a part like this, with this amount of stick out, it wouldn't surprise me if I need the follower rest to support the workpiece. Not the greatest first pass, but I think if I bump up the depth of cast, it should be okay. Okay, it was actually doing pretty well up until that point. Just need to tighten the chuck a little bit more and we should be okay. Okay, that was the first pass, and all in all, I'm pretty impressed with just how well it did that cut. Apart from that small mistake early on, we got a really good surface finish the whole way through. Now, I have chucked in a fresh new insert because the old one was looking a bit ratty. Nothing left to do but let the lathe and the power feed do its job. Now as the part got smaller and the surface speed drops, I am going to have to bump up the RPM just a little bit and the carbide insert should cut a lot better at these higher speeds. With the main shaft now turned down, I can now come in and cut in that step down so the drawbar stays concentric with the spindle. Alright, and that's the main shaft of the drawbar, now taken down to size. All in all, I'm really impressed with how the lathe has handled this much stick out and at this small of a diameter. Pretty convinced that the new rigid cross slide is helping in that area. I now need to cut an M12 thread into the end of the drawbar, so I'll remove the parting blade and replace it with a thread cutting tool. And just when I thought I was all good to go, it seems that the cutting tool holder is bumping into the live center. Now my initial plan was to simply push the part back into the lathe chuck and go from there, but I wasn't too impressed with the run out that I was seeing on the part. Now in the grand scheme of things, it probably wasn't a huge issue. It's pretty normal to see 40 microns of run out on this chuck, but I'm guessing for a part like this, it's probably better if I can make the threads as concentric as possible. I want the force on the threads and obviously the force on the tool to be as evenly distributed as possible. So what I'll do now is I'll get the three jaw removed and I'll replace it with the collet chuck. Of course though, nothing can ever be as simple as I'd like it to because the part doesn't actually fit in the collet chuck. Thankfully though, I should be saved because I can feed the pass into the collet chuck from the back.
All right, pretty happy with how those threads came out. Now the next thing that I need to do is get the hex pattern cut on the top of the drawbar. Now initially my first reaction was that this was going to be pretty difficult to do given the condition of the drawbar that I already have. And you pretty much need a drawbar to hold the cutting tool in the spindle. But thankfully it ended up not being a huge issue. And the reason for that is that the collet sit a little bit deeper in the spindle than the ER collet holder does. And this is down to the collet compressing as it's pulled up. What this meant then was that I had almost a full rotation of intact threads to hold the collet in place. Not really as much as you'd want, so I will take it easy, but it should be enough to get this job done. So what I'll do is I'll now put the dividing head on the mill table and that can get the hex pattern cut. And that's the drawbar now cleaned up. Not too much work, but I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. What I now need though is a new drawbar hammer to accept the new hex pattern that I'm using on the top of the drawbar. The drawbar hammer that I've been using for the past three years has a striking face on one side and a welded in Allen key at the other. Probably one of the best tools that I've ever made and it allows me to go from undoing the drawbar to hitting it in one go. Now instead of modifying this one, I'm instead going to bring back an old relic that's been sitting around doing nothing for the past few months. This is my old machinist hammer, which has been sitting around doing nothing ever since I replaced it with a much better dead blow hammer about 6 months ago. The good thing about it is that each end is already threaded to accept inserts, and it already has a brass striking face on one side. And now I've gone to the shops and I bought a cheap $5 hex socket and all I really need to do now is make up an insert to screw into the end to attach the hex socket onto the end of the hammer. It might look a bit weird but at the end of the day it's just a drawbar hammer and all I really need from this is a quick and easy solution to get the mill back up and running. So I've got some steel in the lathe and I'll use it to make the insert from. With the threads now cut, I'll use the dividing head to cut the half inch drive. Or maybe not, the steel can't actually fit all the way through the dividing head.
Now the purpose for that hole is to accept a screw which will hold the socket in place. Now to make sure that the insert doesn't unscrew when I use it, I'm going to drill all the way through it and add a pin and rivet it in place. Alright, with that now done, let's get it assembled and see if it works. Alright, and that works pretty much perfectly. The threads feel pretty good and I think the drawbar is pretty concentric in the spindle. All in all, not a planned project, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out in the end. Fingers crossed that this one does last and works a bit better than the old one. Although in fairness, the last one did last about three and a half years and it got a lot of work. And with that, thank you very much for watching this unplanned video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time for a proper project.